If you're new here, I'm Allie, a fiance, an anthropology major, and a woman who really enjoys red pill content. Today's video is going to be on the difference between an echo chamber and community and why community is so important for young women who are on their feminine journey. But in order to illustrate that, we're going to bounce around from various topics. First, we're going to talk about how the red pill is not an ideology, but rather a system in which you can use empirical data to come to your own conclusions because most of us are unaware of larger schemas that are at play and if you don't notice them well it's gonna go over your head and you're gonna get taken advantage of and finally discussing loneliness because we know that the female community is pretty divided right now women used to live among one another and specifically work with each other and men used to work amongst themselves as well they only ever came together in the home things are different now while we have independent women we also have separated women so we'll get into a couple of these topics if you like my content make sure you give it a big thumbs up subscribe down below and hit the notification bell i have huge plans for this platform in 2022 i'll be having women from various walks of life come through here periodically to discuss what has worked for them what has failed them and what advice they would give to other young women because what a woman wants in a woman's full life will vary from person to person so I've discussed before that what most women want are gonna be four things the husband the kids the career and the body and that's why it's important to have these different women from different walks of life so that we can take in the information throw away what we don't need and make changes accordingly to our lives without any further ado let's jump into it Rolo Tomasi just did a video that I thought was really good and comprehensive on what the red pill really is because I know enough about it to know that it's not an ideology because an ideology would be based on beliefs. The reason why I stuck with the community is because it made sense. As a woman who was born into some pretty tough circumstances, I got tired of failing at life and I noticed once I picked myself up that other women were also failing at life and it wasn't because they didn't have what it takes. It's because they're not being educated and giving the actual feedback on how the world is, not how the world feels. As a woman, we're often misled by our emotions and there's reasons. There's reasons why we make decisions based on emotions. A lot of sciences will not admit this, but men and women vary neurologically and hormonally. That's why we make different decisions. You might be looking at your brothers, your father, your uncle, wondering why does he get to these conclusions so easily? It's because our feelings lie to us. That's not to say that there are not logical women out there, but it would be disingenuous to withhold the information from women that biologically we can be led astray by intense feelings. That's normal, that's part of being human. Women tend to struggle with neuroses such as anxiety and depression, while men seem to struggle with aggression. There's biological reasons for this. So when I'm looking at the red pill, it's not so that I can just accept myself and who I am as a woman. No, it's because I wasn't being given honest feedback on how to succeed at life. That's why I'm grateful for the male mentorship that I have in this space. I don't wanna hear what makes me feel good as a woman because I have actual goals. I'd like to be a wife, I'd like to be a mother, and I'd like to succeed a little bit at business. I can't go to my girlfriends for that because they're just gonna tell me what feels good. Your girlfriends will wait until you have your second child with a method and maybe, just maybe, one of them will say something to you. Women have this thing called in-group preference. It's pretty significant. In-group preference is also a phenomenon that goes along in different groups. In-group preferences just means that those that are in groups that you identify with will get better treatment from you than those that are out of that group. It could be things like you are a conservative, so you tend to listen to conservatives more and validate them more. You could be a Latina, so you prefer to hang out with Latinas, but when you're met with somebody of a different ethnicity, you don't really jive with them. Or you could be a veteran and you just kind of tend to look down on civilians. These are all examples of in-group preference. It just happens to be that female in-group preference is a problem. That's why you can't go to your girlfriends for advice, guys. It's not gonna work. Go to the girlfriends that are okay with hurting your feelings in the name of love, because those are the ones that are gonna have your back when times get tough. Things that the red pill is useful for besides intergender dynamics, it's gonna be 
politics. And you can take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I'm just a human being just figuring it out along the way. I am in no way a political professional, an academic professional, or even a military professional. I only know like this much about life and life is like this much. Okay, I'm limited. But what I will say on how the red pill could come in handy is you might be wondering when you vote for someone, how they promised they would spend their tax paying dollars on specific things before you voted for them. But then after you voted for them, they spent it the exact way they said they wouldn't. It's pretty weird, right? Other examples where you could utilize a red pill would be when men and women commit the same heinous crimes, equal severity. Why are sentencings different? Could it be that there is such a thing as female privilege? And one of my favorite things that I came into awareness myself was when the United States Army tried to convince me and other women, keep in mind, women on average are shorter and smaller than men, sexual dimorphism is real. They tried to convince us that we could carry men off of the battlefields Ourself. Six foot men who have been shot and have armor on. Guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I think they're lying. Because they are, because there's biological differences between men and women, although people are gonna keep trying to refute it. So if you're going through life and things are just not adding up, that's what the red pill is for. It's not just there to sift through, does this guy wanna smash your pass? And it's not just there to decide, does body count really matter? It's for so many more things than that. These larger schemas are always going to be at play. We have only in modernity started to move away from monarchies, but what replaced monarchies? Are most of us actually in charge of the lives that we lead? Or are we indentured in one way or another? It's just food for thought. I'm not here to say it's all gloom and doom. I'm just saying, that from cradle to grave, we will always be connected to one another and will always be connected to systems of oppression and we will always be connected to systems of liberation. That's just human nature. Let's get into this Coach Greg Adams clip that perfectly summarizes some of the pushback that I've experienced as a woman who decided to pursue traditional conservatism in modernity because it's not a popular choice, but should we really be shaming women who want to live wholesome lives that include being wives and mothers? I don't think so. I think that's inherently anti-feminist. Let's get into the clip. Our society doesn't seem to reward good women. And so you will position yourself as traditional conservative, but you'll get roasted. Women will roast you. And let's be frank, women are probably worse to good women than men. Women treat good women worse. They'll treat them like they're making the wrong choice. They'll treat them like they're losing their independence. They'll treat them like you're going to be a slave. If a woman comes out, oh, I'm going to get married at 22 and start having a family. They'll talk them out of it. Oh, no, girl, don't do that. Wow. The more I watch Coach Greg Adams content, the more I really seem to like him because I think he understands what goes on in the female community. When I'm talking about female and group preference, it's not just if you're a woman. It's if you're a woman who complies. And when I say comply, it's are you going along with modern feminism? And I believe that is why a lot of young women are struggling romantically. It's because their romantic lives, their bedrooms, their mate choices have been politicized. And there was a time where Democrat women and conservative women were just political outside of their homes. But when they came home, they understood that there was a time and a place and that they were better off letting their men lead. That's not all men, it's not all women. I'm just here to connect some dots for you real quick. Now here's the issue with modern day liberals and modern day conservatives. Women might be experiencing cognitive dissonance because they don't wanna go along with what's happening. And what is happening here is that the left has progressed so much, so rapidly, that who would have been an Obama era moderate is now a conservative. And if you as a young woman are finding that, well, what I believed five, six years ago made a lot of sense to me and I still believe that, but if I say that out loud, my girlfriends won't agree with me, you're not crazy. It's happening, but is maintaining the peace between girlfriends that are not gonna be there for you in old age worth the cognitive dissonance of going along with the narrative? That's my question to you. Because while girlfriends are great and female networks are important, 
it's only beneficial if these women are going to help you continue your path toward your goals, your actual desires in life. And some of them could be holding you back. And it does seem like society doesn't reward good women. Good women don't sell their bodies for quick cash. Good women don't reproduce on the fly. Good women have to believe that delayed gratification will give them the results that they want. And it's hard. It is hard to understand as a woman if you are waiting for marriage to reproduce, that means that your child will have less time with you on this earth as opposed to some of your girlfriends and they get to have their babies now. They get to be mothers now. But you, as a woman, weighing the costs and the benefits, have to sit and be patient and hope that that will yield what you're aiming toward. And it's scary to trust that one, when you date a man, that he'll marry you. Two, that he'll be a father that sticks around. And three, that you both have the tools that it takes to make a marriage work given the current marriage statistics. I get it and I understand, but is what is holding you back from making rational decisions in your romantic life political ideology? Do you really want political ideology to eclipse your romantic life? Because ideology is based off of beliefs. It's not necessarily based off of facts. And the left and their right both have their individual problems. I am unregistered with either party. I know enough about indoctrination to know that it's kind of inevitable and to see it wherever I find it and to understand that it's on me to exercise discernment. But young women are being led to believe that it makes perfect sense to politicize your bedroom, to politicize your heart. When you look at Tinder profiles, we have women that are asking on a hookup app because nobody goes to Tinder for marriage. It happens. It happens, but that's not what people are going there for. But yes, these women are concerned about how men politically lean before they even get access in the bedroom. And honestly, let's be real. Some of these guys might just be lying to get some kitty cat. <coughs> Why on earth are young women conflating how a man votes is indicative of the kind of husband and father he will be. Those things don't go together. I've said it before that there was a time where women understood that politics took place outside the home, not in the home. How a woman felt or thought about taxes had nothing to do with her ability to come home and cook a meal, raise her kids, validate her husband, and be cherished by her husband. They were separate. Now everything is politicized and that's creating a lot of cognitive dissonance in these young girls because they're parroting what their girlfriends want to hear. But then when they get home, well, they want a masculine man, but isn't masculinity toxic? It's a lot. And then what would be the pushback if you were to change your political beliefs because it wasn't aligning with your heart? It wasn't serving you well you would lose a lot of girlfriends and it's happened. Women on my side of things have lost a lot of girlfriends and that's okay because it affords you the opportunity to cultivate a feminine community. Femininity is going to look different on different women. There's various personalities and styles and archetypes, but it's at least half of that yin and yang, that masculine and that feminine. So it's helpful if you would like to be led in your home. And if you lose some girlfriends along the way, but you gain a healthy husband, I think that's okay. If you're curious on how to cultivate a feminine network, you're going to have to actually go out there and look for these good girls because good girls are not in common places. They're not at bars. They're not at parties. They're in the most obscure and boring locations. Some are obvious. Church is obvious. And when I say church, it can be a synagogue. It can be a mosque. It just has to be a place where a woman can exercise her religious convictions. You don't need to go around specifically looking for a Christian girlfriend, but you probably want a girlfriend with convictions. And that's why I say to explore spiritual women. Other places you can find good girls would be universities, coffee shops, and libraries. You gotta hunt these sisters down, but once you find them, they're very good girlfriends and they keep you grounded because in the middle of all of what is going on right now, where up is down, left is right, right is left, you need to have that female community around you that when you go to them and you ask, am I crazy? They can look at you in your face and honestly tell you, no girl, you're not crazy. It's bananas out here. I'm so glad you're my friend. And that's what I've been able to do recently. A lot of my life I've spent being very shy and very averse to female interaction because I've been primarily bullied by women my whole life. But 
I knew that I needed a female network and it's been paying off a lot. And I would say too, that with the breakdown in community in the West, there's been a breakdown in female community and women ought to be a little bit more embarrassed of themselves. If your husband is taken care of, if your kids are taken care of and you're not tired, then you ought to be embarrassed that you're not helping your girlfriend out when she asks you if you can be her sitter while she goes on date night with her husband. We have to do better as a female community and assist one another with honesty, compassion, and integrity. And it's possible and we're capable of it. I watch my girlfriend's kids all the time, not because I want something back, but because I understand that life for a woman should not end just because she got married and had children. And that's why I'm here to lend a helping hand and you can do it too. Women can get together in mom groups and rear each other's children. But I want to get to that part where we talk about the difference between an echo chamber and a community. An echo chamber is just going to repeat and parrot the ideas that are already floating around. They're not going to challenge your perspective. But a community is a group of people that share premises. How each person got to that premises is going to be on an individual basis. But at the end of the day, you guys have some common agreements on what is the foundation of life and living. And once you have that, you don't have to debate with a woman. The problem with having dissenting opinions and entertaining debates when you're trying to better yourself as a woman is that you never get to the tips and tricks. You don't get to hear how you can serve your husband better, how you can exercise better self-care, or how you could understand your children's development on an emotional level in a better way. All you're going to get to is, well, why are you trying so hard to make these people's lives better? You're not gonna get anywhere by entertaining those discussions. That's why you need a female community. And in the description, I'm gonna put a couple of women that have helped me on my feminine journey. Some of them are gonna be on YouTube. Some of them are gonna be on Instagram. Some of them are in real life, so I can't share those, but I'll share the ones that I can online. That way you can start cultivating and growing your own feminine garden because good girlfriends are rare, but they are always worth the effort. When you are genuinely happy about your success, they're genuinely happy for you. When you are sad, they hurt for you. And there is an element of reciprocity. When she's down and out, you feel a little bit off too because it hurts to see another woman that you love in that way. That's all I have for you guys. I hope this video was helpful. Check out the resources in the description. And if you're just starting out your feminine journey and you don't know how to go about it, it's okay. A lot of us kind of start out that way. You have to think the baseline of a modern woman is indoctrination, but you can break out of that. And it's important to first fix your social media diet. What we feed our eyes is sometimes much more important than what we feed our stomachs. Have an amazing week. I will see you next time. Bye.